in my life was field day with, with this club. Uh, and the reason is um, I was really surprised how the, the, the members, especially those that I hold in extremely high regard, uh, were asking me how to do things that they by far were far more capable of doing than I could ever be. So uh, that, that's what the purpose of this brief presentation is. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I want you to be in the mindset of, you know, how did we do? And, and what are we going to be looking at for uh, some of the things we're looking at for next year? All right. So uh, this is an assessment. Uh, and, you know, as you do anything, right, you plan, execute, you evaluate. Uh, we certainly did the planning. And thank God for the membership we executed. And, uh, and now this is the part where we do a little bit of evaluation, all right? Uh, so to sum it up, where did we get it right? You know, where are some things we did well? And again, everything I'm going to present to you, this is not my stuff. This is your stuff. The, everything that I'm going to show you is what I got from, uh, from responses I received from you all uh, when I sent out uh, to the club email uh, list, you know, request for comments. Um, what could we have done better, and what are some thoughts we have for next year? Because a lot of people said, you know, next year, why don't we do this, why don't we do that? And, and so this is a synopsis. I was going to try to weigh things, like say so many people commented this and so many commented that, but it just, we didn't have enough granularity to really be able to do that. So without any further ado, what did we, well, oh, here's our understanding. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> My big thing is, is for a constructive, we've never had a problem with that as long as I've been in this club. But I just want to level set everybody. First off, we're all volunteers. You know, everybody that was on a, you know, a certain subcommittee or everybody that was responsible for something, I know we all did our best. And I, I think that that's really important that we all understand. We're an all volunteer. Did anybody get paid for field day? No, none of us. So for all of you that contributed, it's greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. You all did a great job. Um, at the same time, we all want to have a successful field day. I don't think anybody goes in there saying, I really want this field day to be a flop. Uh, but finally, and this is kind of the, the, the part that I find very interesting, is we all may measure success differently. If I went around the room and said, and, and if I passed around, if I gave you all a piece of paper and I said, write down what you think a successful field day is, and if I collected all those papers, I'd probably get some different responses. I'd probably get some different responses. And that's just human nature. A lot of that's because of our bias. A lot of it's because of our uh, things we've done in the past with field day. A lot of it might be based on some leadership positions we've had or life experiences. 
you know, how we interact in our, in our ham community. So a lot of those things are gonna determine how we all view success. So the idea of a good field day, in my opinion, is, and I've had this from other people I've discussed this with, is how do you measure success? It's really a balance. There's, there's a balance in field day. I mean, uh, to a degree, the ARRL, you know, makes it a contest. And how, how can that be? Well, there's points associated with stuff. And it gets published in their magazine. In, in a magazine. So having said that, it's a contest. How many people in here like the contest? Well, you're going to get people in the club that are, that are into that sort of thing. How many people have never been to a field day in their life, or this was their first one? All right, so you got that. I could go on and on and on. How many people just like to eat really good chicken? <laughs> You know, I would not have done this if I knew Larry wasn't going to have chicken there. So we all measure, I, I measure success by is the chicken hot and did they leave me the wings? If the, field, if the chicken's hot and there's a bunch of wings there and nobody else ate them, that's a good field day for me. So I like to go in with that understanding. Now, this is where, again, these are comments I received. If you remember when I talked about planning field day at, at our, well, it was our last meeting already? I talked about safety. I led with safety, that that's the most important thing. Larry was our safety officer, did a great job. We had zero incidents. We were accident free. Not a single accident. No cuts, no bruises, no nothing. No fires that you couldn't put out. No. But, but the point is, and I think that's a good thing. So that can, you can say, well, that's a good measure of success. You know, we, we all got out alive. Uh, I had many comments. Uh, from different people about how overall positive and friendly the environment was there. That was actually a very a big comment. A lot of people that came back to me with responses commented that it felt very positive. It felt very uh, uh, friendly and that people were, you know, kind of complimenting each other and lifting each other up. And I, I got that a lot. And that, this tends to happen with our club. Great food. And these are in no particular order, by the way. But people did comment on the food. So Larry, again, thank you for all that you did. And thank you for everyone who, who brought food and contributed to, to all of that. Um, the HRS, we got, I had a lot of comments that people loved, loved, loved the big screen TV. Uh, so that, that was good. The push-up hex beam, uh, almost everybody commented on the hex beam. Some of them that didn't even operate or want to operate just commented that it looked cool. I had three emails that said it looked cool. I'm like, all right, we'll take it. Uh, I, I had two comments. Uh, one was from a new club member. Another one was from someone out of town who just flat out said, impressive radios. <laughs> when you look at our lineup, we do. We have some pretty darn good radios that we set down on those tables, and, and that did not go unnoticed. Um, GOTA, uh, again, another, uh, we had good comments with GOTA. Uh, I think, John, you did a great job with that. Where'd John go? John, John you did a great job with that. Uh, good job with the yeah, GOTA. Yeah. Th th thank Michael for handing me all the, all the paperwork to go with it. So. <laughs> We, we had, there was another comment that I found really interesting, and I, I don't, I wasn't really, to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting this, but at the same time it kind of was. Operator quality. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, this is something I've never really thought of with field day. For field day, a lot of people, this is their first time they've really seen a ham, you know, hands down operating. You know, I don't know if anybody was there when Paul was working any of his pileups uh, on my fan antenna, by the way. But, uh, but uh, he was nailing it. I mean, I, I was humbled looking at Paul, watching him work those pileups. Unlike me, he does it screaming into the microphone, and he still managed to work them. Uh, but he did a great job, and uh, that was something to see. I had multiple people comment on Dennis's CW and just how, how it was like watching him, like a dance, uh, watching him operate. I had, I had multiple comments about that. When you think about operating at field day, we want to have new people there. We want to have the new CW folks. But it can be a little intimidating sometimes, especially CW in a field day environment. So it's kind of neat to at least set up to where you can watch someone proficient. 
It might be the first time a new ham's ever really seen anybody operate CW. Or it might be the first time on phone you've ever even seen somebody work a pile up. Which brings me up to another thing that people really liked were the two headphones. Uh, Jim, you brought you had two headphones on your set on that Heil. That was a nice headset, by the way. My gosh, cost more than my first car, maybe my first two cars. But uh, <laughs> but it, it was really cool because a lot of people I noticed were listening to that second headset. So even if you were a little mic shy, at least getting the experience of the timing uh, of working a lot of QSOs at once, a lot of people commented on that. So the, the two headsets were a good thing. Um, the tent configuration, whose idea was it to put the two tents like overlapping when we knew we had foul weather? Whoever came up with that, you know, architectural genius. Uh, yeah, we had multiple people, uh, multiple people also commented on that. They looked at the tents and how it was like all one large tent. And, and some people viewed that as a positive, especially with some of the weather. In case none of you have heard it, the Bob actually works Serbia. Yeah, I, oh, everybody heard it from there. <laughs> I jumped up, yeah. practically destroyed a radio and a headset, oh not to God. mention me Is and Bob. 1230 in the, in, the, in the morning, and the, the north side of Albemarle County was in. <laughs> I got Serbia! I got Serbia! Well, okay. Okay, who has ever worked Canada? Have you ever noticed so many times you get guys with a really heavy European accent in Canada? There's about five Canadian guys that all have the same. Yeah, it's not French, it's, it's similar to Serbia. Well, anyhow, I thought I had a guy in Canada, and, but he didn't understand the exchange. He, he was clueless about the exchange. So for the longest time, I thought I was talking to a guy in his house who didn't understand where he was and what his you know, mode was. And so uh, what had happened is uh, I ended up, uh, when I finally found out he was in Serbia and we had no DX up until that point, uh, I was just, I was like beside myself. And well, the thing, not Serbia, but Slovenia. My, it turns out that the guy was about 25 miles from the city, or the village rather, where my mother's family is from. My mom's Croatian, her name's Todorich. So, uh, the other thing that people commented on was our teamwork. We had some very good uh, comments about our teamwork, and, and that's always a good thing. Uh, when, uh, when uh, you know, when people see us working together, and that, that was very, very, uh, that felt good to, to see that as a comment. Okay, where could we have done it better? All right, first and foremost, I'll go right with the safety. It's a good thing we didn't have any accidents because we did not have a first aid kit. Or if we did, it was buried somewhere. Uh, my oversight, I should have should have had one there, but uh, that was that was one that I noticed. We actually had one in my, my front of my Okay, so we had one. Okay, that's good, that's good. Now, the one, besides that, that was my own that I put up on the top. But somebody did mention they didn't see a first aid kit. Does, uh, interference. Interference was a real challenge this year. Um, radio interference and operator interference. I tend to talk really loud on the on the radio. Uh, I, I know that. Uh, that's why I kept my cues. That's just on the radio. <laughs> Only on the radio. Just on the, when I was in the theater, they never said Bob reject. Um, so uh, that, that was an issue. There were, there were people, and I will say this, even though I was far from Dennis, and Ed confirmed this with me, because I thought I was the only one. When I'm at field day all night long, and when I go to bed the next night, I am hearing CW in my head. <laughs> when I lay down, anybody else ever have that have? When I lay down, I'm like going, doo, 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 and I'm going to know CW. So. But the other thing was heat management. The tents got hot. And we have some good suggestions on that we're going to talk about. Operator scheduling and adhering to the schedule and people showing up when they're going to or people not sh people showing up at a different time and wanting to operate. So there were issues with the operator schedule. Uh, I should have posted the schedule in retrospect. Yeah. I've seen this in every field that we have some very sophisticated, nice people like you and like the person scheduling. Because if you don't have leaders, be it Larry and I and Bob in the past and Bob you this year, 
fail to say, oh, here's a front end. Get your butt over there. You're supposed to be offering a Yeah, what had happened is so I, I had it on my morning. phone and I didn't print it out. So it's a lesson learned. It's yeah, I, I had it on my phone and I didn't print it out. And I was looking at the schedule when people were people and were not there. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Well, they were too polite to all to say, hey, it's my turn to buy. Or something <laughs> happened. You know, I, I really wasn't on that much this year. I really wasn't. I mean, I think I only got 200 so cubes. So lessons learned is next year's whoever runs the late, just print it out and walk around and say, Hey, Larry, aren't you supposed to be operating 20 now? Right. Now? We've got, we've, sure our, my next slide's going to be where we're going next year uh, and what we're going to do. The other uh, thing was the antenna selection. Uh, we gave the Wyndhams a shot. They, they were, they would have had to work their way up to be terrible. I mean, they were bad. You know, the swir was somewhere between, you know, the swir on those antennas was like, ain't no way, and you got to be kidding me, somewhere between that range. Um, and my, I think, you know, not to brag, but dang, I got a good antenna. And that simple fan dipole of mine, center fed with ladder line, outperformed the Wyndhams. I mean, of all those QSOs that Paul got, 500 plus. I think almost all of them were on that wire antenna. I don't think he was really on the hex beam all that much. Um, I think the trouble was we just didn't check out the antennas that the man. We should have checked. Yeah, we, you know, I really believe those Wyndhams were going to be okay, and and in retrospect, they weren't. Um, the other thing was operator training. Uh, some people uh, wanted to operate, and I think it was very, very, their very, very, very first time. And uh, some people were commenting that that was just almost too uncomfortable. And these were from people who were first time operators. They said, you know, I w if there would have been a way for me to, you know, because it is intimidating. I mean, you know, say you're working a pile up, you're an operator, a new person shows up. How many people that haven't been on phone before can just walk in and work a pile up? You can't. A lot of, how many experienced hams have difficulty working a pile up? So to, 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 to expect a new ham to walk in and work a pile up or even a simple thing as calling CQ could be very nervous, you know, uh, nerve wracking. So maybe there are some things we could do uh, for operator training. Testing, testing, testing. You know, we tried to test the setup. Uh, I think we tested too late. Uh, but then again, it's a lot of work to raise five antennas. And that's how many antennas we had up. It takes a lot of work to get those antennas up. So, you know, my thinking is, uh, about the only solution is if we go back to the same key, uh, same location next year, is is we simply need to go there well ahead of time and experiment with different antennas configurations. Um, furniture. Uh, that's so, field that, that'd be great. Furn I'd love to do Winterfield Bay. Furniture uh, was an issue for some people because we didn't really. Uh, I was I was sort of sensitive to bringing furniture out. Uh, because we had to clean everything we took out, and uh, th that that was uh, to a, to a degree an issue. We had uh, one person in a wheelchair that had accessibility issues, uh, so where we were physically located within the lo locale, uh, even though it was a good windbreak and and a good, there were some good things about where we were. Uh, there were also some accessibility issues where we were. Glare on the computer. Go ahead. When you get a chance, what's winter field? Winter field. There are two field days a year. There is a winter. There is a winter field day, um, and we can discuss that because I love cold weather. Um, it's also good, better on the gear. Um, so accessibility. Glare on some of the screens. Glare on the big TV. Uh, Mike, we and I talked about that. We knew that was going to happen. And uh, public involvement. Uh, we we really haven't had. Uh, I think the turnout some people would like to have, although Goto was very successful. Uh, I, I would guess that we had more walk-ins this year, excluding the firemen in previous years. Right. And I think it was the social media. I think so. I think it worked out. Uh, it could have been better. Thoughts for next year. So if you look at Field Day 2019, what are some of the takeaways? What are some of the things we, we know that we could uh, probably do next year? Uh, operator positioning. Uh, does it make sense to have CW uh, by itself somewhere uh, or, you know, more segregated? Does it make sense for me to operate mobile? Does it make sense? 
does it make sense? You know, would it be nice if every 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 uh, radio had two headsets, where where well, another ham could listen to? Well, that's 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 under more modes. Yeah. The other thing is more granular operator scheduling. What do I mean by that? I think. From a standpoint of a sign-up, if we really want to be serious about operator sign-ups and sticking to that schedule, uh, Ed, you had a suggestion. You know, we we need to well, we need to have a one-hour time slot where you commit to a full hour on the radio. Now that might not sound like much, you know, because some people can work eight hours without going to the bathroom. Uh, you know, other people working an hour would be a huge stretch. So. So maybe there needs to be a de degree of granularity in the time slots. I think but the, the wider time slots, we subconsciously encourage a lot of new operators to be intimidated and they just watch. So they don't want to sign up for such a long time. So I think the one hour granularity would help employ our uh, own. Moving on, I don't want to take too much time with the pitch. Um, Jim had a, had a suggestion, and I, I kind of agree with it. And he, again, we're not discussing these tonight. These are, I'm just throwing it out there, and this will be on the website. Um, the idea of uh, single band dipoles, or, or, or maybe a little better, fan dipoles, mm -hmm. just simple dipoles. Uh, my, uh, I, I've said it a million times already, my dipole performed really well. And I think if we, you know, it's a 27. It's a 40, 20, 17, 15 dipole. And it cost me, I think I have $22 in it. And that's the one that I contacted Slovenia on. So uh, just a single, you know, simple dipole. And as, as Jim and several others have already commented, just string them all on one line. So the one ends on the other end. Uh, something to think about. And again, more testing. Had a wonderful, and then you know, operator training might be a good idea. Uh, might be a good idea. Uh, maybe prior to field day, some of us can open our shacks to people and say, hey, would you like to stop by? You know, we're having, maybe we could designate a certain number of shacks to be pre-field day spots where you could go uh, and get on the air a little bit. Um, more modes. Uh, Mike, you've made some good points about some of the VHF, some of the digital. I mean, there's. There's more things we can do besides what we're doing. Um, and again, uh, Ed, or, I forget who it was, Larry, I think, commented, maybe we go 4A or 4F next year, depending on where we are. Maybe we up at the 4 and have a digital and slash uh, uh, VHF. Um, uh, tarps under the tent roofs, brilliant suggestion. I think somebody else mentioned we used to do that. Uh, if you put a silver tarp under the white tents, it'll get rid of the UV coming through. Makes the tent a lot cooler. The other great suggestion a gentleman from Texas had is what they do in San Antonio is they take box fans, tie off the corners up underneath horizontally on the tent cross members, and they end up like ceiling fans. So they don't even have fans taking up space. The fans are on low, operating as ceiling fans strung out down the tents. That was brilliant. So before between that, and the tarps, I'll bet we'd run a lot cooler in there. Um, but that was the ceiling box stands uh, they came up with. Improved accessibility. Maybe what we do is we move the whole thing closer to the parking lot if we go, uh, if we go there again. Uh, have it closer to the parking lot. Better accessibility. Might be a little better uh, when it's time to eat where we're not sinking in the ground if we have uh, any kind of rainfall. Something to think about, repositioning it. Um, Speaking of accessibility and antenna locations and all that, uh, just maybe do we need more club gear in general? Uh, give some examples. We had a club push-up antenna. Uh, Jim was kind enough to store it at his place, been there you know, over the years. The push-up, not push-up antenna, push-up mast. The push-up mast needs some work. So uh, John, what I was going to propose is I'll go ahead and put together a punch list of parts that we're going to need to purchase for that mast. I could submit that part list for approval, and we could get that mask back where it needs to be. Because we really shouldn't have to be using member gear uh, when we have a club. But then again, it's a balance between the gear and where do you store it. And that's a whole other discussion. Uh, just simple things like uh, 
should the club have a bag of barrel connectors? You know, should the club have uh, coax that we can make on site? I'm not allergic to soldering. I've soldered a lot of coax. I'm not afraid to build cables if we have to. And I know a lot of other people in the club are the same way. Building a, I'd, I'd love to have a dipole party. Who wants to get together for a dipole party? Let's make a bunch of fans. That's fun. Uh, I, that's a blast. So, you know, I think that we're in a position where without spending a lot of money improving that mast, uh, buying some barrel connectors, making some twin axe, making some dipole, or twin axe, coax, making some dipoles, I think, I think without a lot of investment, we could really have a good club inventory uh, for more successful uh, antennas and configurations for field day. Uh, finally, uh, I like John's suggestion. He's like, well, we need a larger scale hydration. You know, Larry, the, the bottles were great. We had plenty of water there. John's suggestion was, what if we had like a 10 gallon water cooler uh, right there? Uh, uh, that way, you know, I, I'd probably bring my, you know, one of my big water bottles and have it with me the whole time. So, uh, again, that's something we don't necessarily have to buy, but it's something someone may have at home that we could we could bring to the event. There were other things, uh, you know, I'm sure. I hope I didn't miss anything anybody mentioned, but th those were some of the things that we talked about in terms of thoughts for next year. Uh, I'm, that I'm sorry, that were talked about that were brought brought to my attention. Um, Finally, that, that really wraps it up. That's all I wanted to say about it. Uh, this is going to be on, uh, I'm going to make a synopsis of this and make it just a simple PDF file. Could you add one that I had submitted and you didn't include because it's a positive? Great media coverage. Yeah. 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 The whole thing I wanted to say is, uh, and I, I really mean this, I'm not going to try, try not to get emotional, but I respect Jim more than you guys will ever know. And when he asked me where I thought antennas should go, I mean, that's, uh, that was extremely humbling to me because he has forgotten far more about antennas than I'll ever learn. And when Larry asked me where I thought the tent should go, and I think of all the success in Larry's lifetime he's had, uh, <clears throat> for him to ask me where that should happen, I, I'll never forget that. And for Mike to say, where should I put the computers? Really, Mike? <laughs> where do I want your stuff? Are you kidding me? Uh, it was such an honor to do this for the club that uh, I, you know, I said it in my thank you to the club, but I wanted to say it here personally. Uh, you folks are extremely special, and anyone is very, very fortunate and very blessed to be part of this organization. Uh, being the field day chair for this year was, was one of the most humbling things I'll ever do, and I really, really appreciate and respect uh, this club. Uh, you folks are amazing, and I want to thank you all. Thank you. What's that? Chairmanship is open for next year. Yeah, I'll do it next year. I'll do it next year. Hey. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Basically, the way this works is uh, I have uh, a program running on the server at the site that uploaded the uh, database from the logging program every, oh, sorry, uh, updated the database from the logging program every 15 minutes. And then uh, to a server running up the hill actually at the W4 UVA shack. And when that log file got updated, uh, my software kicked off and did some analyses on the, on the uh, contents and fed this display. So uh, motivated by the, uh, I will say, the gentlemanly contest between uh, several of the people in the club as to who was going to get the most contacts. Uh, it's, it is biased toward the contest aspect of field day. Uh, but it gives you a, a snapshot of what's going on. You can see the last 10 or so contacts. You can see contacts on, on the bands, so you can get a sense of what, what the bands are like. And this, of course, is all updating live, so you can see how it changes over time. Uh, you can see what modes are, uh, what's going on with each mode. And then I added in at the last minute the uh, status of each of the three operating positions. So you could see who is operating, what mode they're on, what band they're on. 
And, uh, and then the critical piece, who the, who the hot operators are over here. Uh, the, uh, and then across the bottom is um, the contact rate for every five minute window for the 24 hour period. So you can get a sense of what the level of activity was like over the 24 hour period. And then of course, uh, map, I restricted the map to, to just North America. We obviously made contacts other places, but, uh, and you could show a world map if you wanted to, but it, it would, you wouldn't be able to see much detail. So uh, as has been the case with the, all of the years that I've looked at, most of our contacts were east of the Mississippi. Uh, so that might be a discussion to have about antennas. I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I released it as open source. It's up on GitHub for those of you who know what that means. And um, hopefully, uh, I'm going to send a note to, to the uh, editor of QST. They did a, just a little blurb in QST a few years ago, the first version. I'm going to send them a note and let them know I updated it. It would be neat if some other clubs started to keep track of this. Uh, and Mike, I noticed your modem band were switched. They weren't that way last time. Ah, I think, uh, thank you. It, it wasn't like that yeah, the first no, year I saw this. Huh. So something happened between then and now. Yeah, something Just happened. Just change your label when you're Thanks. Done. Yeah, I've got to fix that. Thanks. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you for doing that, uh, Mike. I, I wish I'd had time to enjoy this display at field day, but I was so wrapped up. But no, it's all right. All right. As, uh, screens at each one of the stages. <laughs> As a follow-up to, uh, to some of those stats, uh, let's keep the lights down there. So um, here's, uh, here's our stats by band and uh, a CW phone and then the total. You can see uh, highlighted 781 CUSOs on 40 meters. That was our bread and butter band. Uh, great, great job by the phone folks. I mean, uh, 1,159 points there and um, even though that's 306 don't forget we multiply it by two two points for CW anyway um, but uh, what was different this year is we worked uh, stations on on 10 meters at least I did uh, and uh, 15 was was very good I don't think we had many contacts last year on on 15 meters 80 is I don't remember what last year was, but I remember what I did last year on 80. That's uh, 80, 80 was great last 80 year. 80 was on fire last year. Yeah, And yeah. Uh, I just, I had very, 80 <laughs> was incredibly noisy this year. All so right, so, so here's a comparison of, I thought I had the 2017 stats, and after I was halfway through doing this, I realized it was 2016. So my apologies, but here's a comparison from two years ago. Um, 2016 versus this year. So look at 80 on CW, nothing uh, two years ago versus at least we got some on CW. Uh, again, 40 meters, uh, look at that difference between 2016 and, and uh, this year. And 15 meters, we had uh, uh, quite a few here and 10. So. 10 meters is very sporadic opening, so <coughs> probably uh, not worth looking into. But the totals are a big difference there. That's like twice the number of points, QSOs. So great job for all the operators uh, this year. So this was a comparison to two years ago. I don't think propagation had much to do with it. I think it just slugging it out and, and just great operating. All right, the other thing I did was um, by country. There you go. Uh, so uh, 1,398 QSOs in the U.S. and 63 in Canada. I don't know who works Cyprus, New Caledonia. Uh, Puerto Rico, of course, is United uh, part of the U.S. territories. And there's your Slovenia. Do you get points from outside of Canada? Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah. All right. So that's by country. And uh, this is by state and province. I know this is hard to read, but uh, we had the most uh, QSOs from Pennsylvania. Uh, New York was second, Ohio, North Carolina, Florida. Can, can, you, can you all read that? Should I enlarge it? Okay. 
but uh, this is by the sections and, and states. Um, so if we go if we go down here, we we worked uh, 52 different uh, sections, and uh, yeah, well that was but that's states. That's not yeah, sections. right, right. Did we get all the sections? Um, no, no, no. We, did Alaska. no. we got Arkansas. We did. We missed Hawaii. We missed Hawaii, Arkansas right? Arkansas was, 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 was a hole when we were operating at midnight. And we missed... Yeah, Alaska, we didn't get either. Yeah, yeah, you were working on it. I tried. We missed Hawaii, right? Yeah, we did not get Hawaii this year. Yeah. Last year we had Hawaii and New Zealand. Yeah. Well, All right. Um, you, know, you know what we need to do is look at the gray line for Alaska next year. We'll figure out what the gray line gets and give them a credit of time at it. And here's a, um, here's a graph about CUSOs by time of day. So when we started out uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we worked until uh, 2 o'clock the following day, 24-hour operation. The most CUSOs here were early morning the next day. And um, I, I, I think that's because 40 and 80 were, were definitely pounding in. People were starting to wake up. But you can see how it drops down here. I guess people are eating dinner or uh, just uh, folks that couldn't stay overnight, whatever. But it seems to drop down this time. And I, I like to do a comparison of uh, this for next year, uh, for last year's. And again, the same, same thing where 5 a.m. Uh, dropped down to 13 QSOs. That is where you lose your power supply. What time was it? Uh, probably, I don't know, it was around. 1 or 2 a.m. Yeah, so. Um, did we do the five solar contacts successful this year? Yeah. We did. I brought my solar panel out and uh, we were able to, uh, solar panel was charging my battery and the battery was operating my rig. Mm -hmm. so, so this might be a good time because I didn't talk about it, but you know, we're talking about QSOs. There are a lot of other things we do for points. And, uh, you know, several of the things, uh, Mike McPherson, Mike, can you tell us some of the things? You did because I know that you personally took it upon yourself to. You know, thank you so much for what you did. You're, you're welcome. I meant that very positive. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, so we got 100 points for sending a message from the field based site to our section manager, uh, which I did. Uh, we um, got 10 points uh, per piece of formal traffic that we originate or receive. Uh, at the site during the field day operating period up to a cap of 100 points uh, did that. And we actually, I think I moved 40 or 50 messages, something like that, in and out of the site, but it's capped at 100 points. Uh, 100 points for um, a, a visit from one of our served agencies uh, to uh, Allison Ferroli, the uh, emergency management coordinator for the city and county visited the site and Gabe Elias, who runs all the communications systems uh, for the ECC, also visited the site, so we got 100 points for that. Uh, we got, um, what else? You did a social media. Uh, education. Oh, uh, educational activity. I did a WinLink um, uh, tutorial. That's another 100 points. There was. Did we get points for social media? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. 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 I took care of social media. Yeah. 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 Social media. Yeah. 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 Got 100 points for the solar uh, alternative power contacts. So I think total, uh, and, and we'll get 100 points for filing our uh, our uh, submission electronically. Uh, what about the media? And so I think total uh, total bonus points in media and. It's going to be big. Uh, total bonus points adds up to about a thousand points, yeah, something like that. So and, and we left so some on the table. We could have done satellite contact. That would have got, gotten us a hundred points. Uh, yeah, so that's a uh, that's a great job. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, that was a big effort that, uh, that Mike did. I mean, I was kind of thinking about your life, but you know, it's a lot uh, of work. he did a lot of work to pull that off. So. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, you know, you're responsible for a boatload of points right there. Yeah. yeah, sorry, you guys who stayed up all night, I appreciate that, but I was the number two point earlier. <laughs> I, I slept in my own Slept bed. like a baby, and uh, <laughs> I slept like a baby. I cried all night with my pants. Oh. <laughs> I want to talk about the midnight group for a second. If you notice that the midnight the shift contributed fairly well to the, 
to the, and if you go back several years, that was flat. There were oh, yeah. nobody operating at that point in time. Yeah, look, they make the free. So if you if you're a little nervous about operating in front of other people, <laughs> midnight shift's a great time. To <laughs> well, you know what's funny? Not to interrupt you, but I will. Yeah. Here's what I found in my experience with field day, and I, not nearly the experience you guys have. People are more forgiving in the middle of the night. Everybody's tired, they're a little punchy. Yeah. So if you're new to operating, believe it or not, that's not a bad time. People aren't real uptight. A lot of people on the radio have been on for like eight hours already. They're a little punchy, they're hanging loose, they're having fun. So, you know, if you're new to uh, HF operations, I agree about it. Midnight's a great time to come out. It's, it's a good environment. And you don't have all that heat problem. But, no, the uh, bugs were not bad this year. Yeah, this year. Yeah. I'm surprised because the grass had been. Then that's a sorry question. No, no. One, uh, one addition to that was the, the folks that provided the generators deserve a big hit. Are they here? Yes. Folks? Yeah, right. One generator and somebody else brought. Those generators work great. And that was a problem previous years. I, I drove out like at 5 a.m. a couple of times and generators were down. The, the network was down. And I wanted to operate, but uh, you know, it just there was no power. So uh, uh, hats off to, to Bob and uh, who was the other gentleman who provided a generator? Was it Dave? Joe. 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 Those 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 two uh, Honda generators did a great job and you can't kept. Beat a 2000 and he had Joe at a new 2200. Same I mean, there were, there were no dropouts here at, at all. I mean, there was operating even. You know, the wee hours. We well, kept, we that kept generator it up. was given to me by a guy that I did work for in Alaska, his payment. And it was in at least 30 pieces in a cardboard box when he gave it to me. Oh, my goodness. Well, so I, I really appreciate the opportunity to work that thing out for that 24 hour period. It's great for the. And what, one thing the logging software does, it, you have to key in who the operator is, the control operator. And uh, I just want to uh, acknowledge they all the. Are the operator? Look at all the folks that contributed to operating. I mean, this was this was great. So, if, if you look down here at the folks that only had two or three, these were probably folks that had never operated before. Um, I know I had uh, uh, Stan and Jim <coughs> help me operate uh, CW, and you know, even though there's a few QSOs there, uh, it still helped. They were actually logging. So the folks that were logging. For me, uh, even though I had, you know, 305 QSOs, I'm a terrible typist. So I appreciated the folks that helped Jim and and Stan and uh, uh, Roger. Uh, Roger is Roger here? Four BR is not a valid call sign. So that should be it's not. No, that was a probably a 2 a.m. typo on my part. Okay, okay. Well, we can we can clean this up. Anyway, well, what um, that that actually puts me past. K4 CJ. I just wanted to make a point of that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you take that 15 and add it on to my, uh, yeah. Okay. Just saying. All right. So we have, you, we have a total, <laughs> total of 16 operators, uh, sideband, and uh, uh, some of the was CW. And I, I was trying to encourage the folks that had just finished the CW class to come out and at least sit there with me. And listen, um, and I, you know, this contests are intimidating. I, I, I choke at a lot of these contests, but I enjoy field day because uh, it's uh, it's not uh, nobody's going to uh, give you a bad mark if you don't get a great score. But uh, next year, I hope to I hope we can double that and have uh, maybe 32 folks come out and and sit there and uh, if they can't do CW, at least help me log the CW contacts. And for sideband, um, your suggestion about you know having the schedule is uh, uh, break it up. Yeah, yeah. All right. Even, even though I was uh, assigned to a twelve-hour spot Sunday morning, I was there, but I felt as if I was a lot more valuable as a lawyer to him than as an operator, and I was always glad to do that and not putting out running time myself. I I only had one. Run and a run to those who are new means that I'm actually sending CQ out and waiting for people to come back. 
I, I really choked with that. But anyway, I had one run, and that was because we didn't have sideband operators uh, mm. uh -huh. pounding my signal. I have, I have a very old radio, and uh, I bring it out there purposely because it's just knobs, and you know, there's no software. Anybody could sit there and say, you twist this knob for this and turn this knob. But the radio just got overloaded uh, a lot. So I did have, I managed one run, and uh, that was because there was no uh, interference from the big sideband stations. And I only run about 25 watts. It's a 50 watt radio, so I'm running about 25 watts. But everybody that heard me came back to me. And everybody I heard, I, I came back to me. So 25 watts is really, you know, on CW, is very efficient. And uh, of course, uh, these guys were running 100 watts, which you, you really need on sideband. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Anyway, uh, thanks, thanks again to all the folks that helped operate uh, the stations. And uh, are there any questions on these stats? All right, so that, that concludes my uh, stats. Thank you. Good job. Good job.